everyone welcome to this video in this video we'll be looking at spectral family associated with t so let's have a look and define what is a spectral family when we associate a particular operator t onto it previously we have to uh, talked about the spectral family but uh, in that case we have not fixed any kind of uh, this uh, spectral operator with it but in this case we are taking this self adjoint and bounded linear operator into account while defining this spectral family so we already know that we can associate a spectral family which we are denoting by this fancy e right so we can associate a spectral family e with a given bounded self adjoint linear operator right so which we are defining again and denoting again by t which is defined from the complex hilbert space to the same hilbert space moreover we also know that the spectral family is used for the spectral representation of this operator t right so if that is so how can we define the spectral family so that is the question here so uh, for that the definition here that is used is uh, corresponding to this operator self adjoint bounded linear operator t is that the spectral family e of t the fancy e of t this is defined by this family here lambda is the parameter taken from the set of real numbers so it could be any number right so when you change the index this uh, projection would change what is e basically it is a projection depending on some lambda we have a particular kind of projection right when once you change this lambda your projection operator would change so this e lambda this represents the projection of h on to the null space on to this null space nt lambda positive of nt lambda so this is the null space nt lambda of which operator t lambda positive now you might be thinking what is this t lambda positive operator we have until now not studied about this operator we already know that what is t t is given to be some op linear operator which is defined from the given hilbert space to the given hilbert space right in addition it is bounded in addition to being linear it is bounded it is self adjoint right so these are the properties that this operator have and uh, corresponding to this if we have some lambda as real number right so this uh, lambda could be associated with this t and we can define some new operator t lambda which we already know it is t minus lambda times the identity operator these things you already know now using this t lambda we can now define t lambda positive which is the positive part of this operator so what is t lambda it is the positive part it is the positive part of t lambda right so how we can define this thing to define t lambda positive we have to take this operator t lambda now we could either uh, write b lambda or we could write t lambda mod these are the two notations which are used in literature we'll be going with this b lambda notation for the next uh, uh, next uh, topics right for the next content so b lambda will be using for denoting the positive square root of t lambda square now when you uh, compose this t lambda with t lambda you would have t lambda square as the new operator so when you take the positive square root of this quantity you would have the operator b lambda which is the positive square root of t lambda square now once you have b lambda you could now define the positive part of the operator t lambda how you can define it by defining this term that it is half of this b lambda plus t lambda b lambda was the positive square root of this t lambda square and t lambda was the initial operator that you have started with so this t lambda plus that is the positive part of t lambda similarly in uh, we could also define t lambda negative that is the negative part of this operator t lambda and it is defined likewise but but now instead of this plus we ha now have a negative sign over here so when you um, when you subtract both of these operators b lambda and t lambda you, and uh, get it divided by 2 you would have the negative part of the operator t lambda right now 
this is these are few of the operators using these operators we are defining this spectral family where what is this e lambda a spectral family is the collection of all the e lambdas and what are these e lambdas they are the projections of these e lambdas they are the projections of the given hilbert space onto the null space of this positive operator t lambda positive right so let's have a more formal definition for this e lambda what is that so uh, we have a theorem defining this spectral family associated with an operator so suppose this t given from h to h be a bounded self adjoint linear operator on a given complex hilbert space and moreover if e lambda where lambda is some real number right e lambda denote the projection of the given hilbert space onto the null space y lambda right which we are denoting by y lambda the null space of t lambda positive so what is e lambda e lambda is a projection which maps whole of the given hilbert space onto the corresponding null space of t lambda positive this is what they are saying in that case now what is t lambda you know it is a positive part of t lambda e lambda positive is the positive part of t lambda then in that case this collection of all the e lambdas where when you vary lambda you would get a new projection operator this family which you are denoting by fancy e this is a spectral family defined on this in closed interval small m to capital m now why this is the spectral family on this interval if you remember we have used this uh interval to define the bounds of the spectrum that means the spectrum would lie entirely into this interval and outside this interval we would have the resolvent set so uh on this interval closed interval we can define the spectral family where the small m and capital m they are given by this these expressions where small m is the infimum of all the inner product taken uh, from tx and x right taken over all uh, all those x's where the norm of x is equal to 1 and capital m is the corresponding supremum taken over all those x which is equal to 1 of the inner product of tx with x right so these are the bounds for the given interval you you can calculate them in this way right so now th that we have defined the spectral family right so is there a way with in which we could really say that the defined spectral family is a spectral family does it follow all the conditions of spectral family yes it is true i am claiming that it is true but we have to prove this thing so we'll be proving this thing in the coming upcoming videos so before we have we are uh, before we move on to the proof we first of all have to understand few things we first of all have to understand what are the operators related to the operator t and what are the operators which are related to the operator t lambda and then we'll be proceeding to further towards the proof of uh, proving that this defined spectral family is indeed a spectral family so i hope you understood this spectral family well that is it for this video thank you for watching